Hello. Um, today, I want to talk about my favorite uh, Christmas film, as well as its sequel. Uh, two years ago, I meant to talk about my favorite Christmas movie, but I just didn't for whatever reason. Um, I was talking about other stuff, but I can't rem remember the exact reason why I didn't talk about it. So think of it as the uh, belated 30th anniversary, because two years ago it was 30 years old, and the sequel is 30 years old this year. So, yeah, and my favorite Christmas movie of all time is Home Alone. Now, um, I've already talked about you know, uh, Home Alone and Home Alone 2, uh, the best ones, honestly, but I've already sort of talked about them overall, um, and I know I made a mistake, and I can't recall, because I haven't watched it <laughs> in a long time, so I can't recall if I fixed it in the sense or corrected myself with writing anything for the on, on screen but you know I messed up and said that in the first film uh, they went to Florida and the second film they went to Paris now a family member of the McAllisters is in Paris during the second film but that's one of a <clears throat> uh, his father's brothers or one of his uncles uh, is in Paris for Christmas to so, but they're immediate family. So, in a way, uh, like some McAllisters are over, you know, in Paris, but not the family we definitely see in these first two films. Um, what do I like about this? And, that, and if you've seen that video years ago, which I'll probably, no doubt I've already had a, thing there for you to see um that other video but one thing i really love about home alone um the first one especially especially is it seems to be one of the last movies to really have the whole meaning of christmas and i know there are people who don't celebrate christmas you know because of their you know their other religions or um not religious at all or whatever or if they are christian you know they might be christians that don't observe christmas and you know there's reasons for that um like you know how like you know jesus wasn't born in december and you know how there's uh you can find how like you know he's born in the fall and all that stuff so there's reasons why certain people don't believe or don't celebrate Christ, uh, christmas uh, even though they're Christian and, but, you know, there's, for all those who do celebrate it, you know, it's, it's all fine. And, you know, in the sense that, you know, it's supposed to be a time where you come together a family and such. And also, you know, uh, uh, the whole religious aspect of Christmas, which is, you know, about the birth of Jesus and observing that, um, you know, those are two essential things. And, of course, you can also extend the whole family thing with friends. Because, you know, sometimes you have very close friends that are pretty much like family. You know, in the first film, especially, uh, there's a lot of that. You know, you know, Kevin doesn't, is not happy with his family. You know, because he kind of gets treated like dirt. And we see him get treated like dirt. And so, in a way, he kind of reacts to that and some people say he's a brat well you know you would be too if you were in that family and everybody dumps on you and you know and in these two films you know buzz is obviously the older brother oldest brother of that fam a section of the family and he's seen and buzz basically gets away with whatever wrongdoing he did uh, in that film or whatever and yet Kevin gets punished. Uh, 
rather than perhaps both get punished or uh, get in trouble or whatever the case may be. You know, it's like Kevin is supposed to know better, even though he's younger. Buzz is clearly in his teens, and in the first film, you know, he's eight, and in the second, he's uh, uh, ten. Uh, if he wasn't, and if Buzz wasn't a teenager in the uh, first film, he was like, I'm pretty sure, though, he would have been like 13, 14 at least. Otherwise, he would have been 12, but, you know, that's whatever. But, but yeah, I'm pretty sure he was um, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure he was uh, at least 13. So then he would have been like uh, 15 in the second film. Uh, but regardless, you know, you think he would be more in trouble than Kevin. I mean, not that Kevin wouldn't be in trouble because of how he wrecked him when he ate all of his pizza. Um, and, you know, that wasn't necessarily the way he reacted. It wasn't the best way, but kind of understandable considering everything that's been happening that we saw up to this point. Um, but, you know, it, uh, you know, he does, he's not happy with his family, so he wishes he didn't never see them again. Wakes up the next morning, they already left, and there's a miscount. There was a miscount for people, and then, uh, you know, with all the, as well as uh, Kevin's plane ticket being thrown away. Um, accidentally, when there's like, uh, soda spilled and everything. Uh, gets wet and it's just thrown away by accident and so uh, it's a, it's an amazing film how you know you know uh, Kevin isn't too fond of his family and even some family members aren't too fond of him at times but then it's like once he's alone at home and they're all out in Paris uh, you know without him they really all feel bad, except for Buzz, because, well, he's Buzz, as well as Uncle Frank, who's a complete jerk, and I, I love the line in the second film, well, oh, wouldn't want to ruin your cheap steak, uh, I wouldn't want to ruin your, uh, you know, wouldn't want to ruin your fun, Mr. Cheapskate, um, and how everyone reacts to that is like, <sighs> though, of course, everybody basically knows, based off of the first film and the second, Frank is a cheapskate. You know, he, he doesn't want to pay for anything. And if he does, if he is going to pay, it's going to be as little as he actually has to. You know, it's going to be on his, you know, you know, uh, his brother or brother-in-law. Uh, now that I'm thinking about it, I can't recall exactly if, you know... Uncle Franken, uh, you know, and John Hurd, who's the dad, whose name, and both, you know, the mom and dad in this film are, their names and the characters are, they're kind of eluding me, but I'll probably come later. But, you know, they're, you know, Kevin's parents, you know, like, uh, who is Frank specifically related to? Uh, I believe. He's someone's brother. I want to say it's Kevin's dad, uh, or it could be you know his wife is this you know the the sibling of either of them. Regardless, Uncle Frank's a jerk and he is a cheapskate, and everyone knows he's a cheapskate. But you know, everybody pretty much seems to overlook that, and at some point someone's going to call him a cheapskate. And the fact that Kevin in the second film was ten is the one to call him a cheapskate is just hilarious. And I'm sure I probably butchered that line. I know it kind of fumbling out of my mouth and I probably got it wrong, but it's just hilarious how he calls him out on being a cheapskate. Everyone's like, 
just just shocked and surprised but everybody pretty much acknowledges yeah he's a cheapskate no one's really surprised overall uh, or to, to think of him as a cheapskate yet it's, it's, it's the 10 year old who calls him such that is the big shock but I don't know he's not by the second one he's not putting up with anyone's nonsense he's tired of it and you know especially his experience in the first film you know I don't completely blame him um but you know with the first film you know you you got a lot of what uh, Christmas is supposed to be about and a lot of subsequent films uh, Christmas films a lot of the whole family stuff and also especially the religious aspect of you know in the first film the church and some stuff that he kind of prays and all that and you know I don't want to get overly religious on you all but you know a lot of these things are supposed to be uh, really core to Christmas and important of what Christmas is uh, it seems to be lost and a lot of it is due to like well what'd you get me for Christmas it's like eh, that's not what the point of Christmas is you know there's nothing necessarily wrong with giving gifts of course on Christmas and receiving gifts and giving gifts and such but that shouldn't be the core of Christmas that shouldn't be what it's about but it's supposed to be about family and you know other things more important than you know presents um and the first film definitely has that um you know at the end Kevin realizes he loves his family even though you know he and this was in the uh, with his neighbor he tells in the church when they see each other like you know how like, I, have you been a good boy? Like, yeah, well, not really. I was kind of a jerk to my family. And, and they can be kind of jerks, too. But, you know, I realized I really miss them. And, you know, it's I guess it's one of those things where you don't know what you, you have until it's gone. You know, Kevin didn't really know how much he really cared about his family until they're gone. And they're off in Paris, you know, and... Uh, his family might not have really truly uh, understood or realized how much they cared about Kevin until they forgot him uh, at home. Um, you know, regardless of them butting heads back and forth throughout the first film and even the second film, you know, they, they love each other. You know, uh, it might... They might, of course, butt heads here and there, but at the end of the day, you know, they love each other and they care about each other. Of course, you know, there's also Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern as the Wet Bandits. They're really hilarious. I I, I love just seeing them in the, in these films. Uh, even if perhaps in the second film, it's interesting how, you know, they escaped prison uh, but then they ended up in New York. Uh, I've heard how some say that's just kind of weird and odd how, how that happens. Like, you know, they happen to be in New York just at the same time Kevin is. Um, it's a film. It's a movie. It's, and overall, it's a fun film. You know, I don't enjoy the second film as much as the first, but the second film is pretty fun. And uh, some of that... Uh, and, in the second film, there's a little more about materialism a bit more than the first film. Um, though in part, you know, there is like a charity they're doing for, like, they're, that's going on for like kids and stuff at a toy store. So that's kind of, that's pretty nice. Um, and, um, the, 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 uh, film within a film uh angels with like, like filthy souls and angels with filthier souls or something like that they got take off of old uh 1930s 1940s uh, gangster films tell you tell you what i'm gonna do with you for you snakes i'm gonna give you to the count of ten you get a get your yellow little girl from up east out of my 
Oh, so sorry. Uh, I'm going one, two, ten. <laughs> yeah, that's just <laughs> that's just hilarious. And then of course, you know, keep the change, you filthy animal. And then the sequel for that, they have Merry Christmas, you filthy animal, which you see a lot on not just memes, but Christmas sweaters and, you know, ugly Christmas sweaters. And yet some of those Christmas sweaters don't look ugly. They actually look pretty good. Um, but that's, I guess, neither here nor there. Um, the point is, you know, I really love these two films. First one especially, but the second one, there is a charm to it, you know. Uh, I don't watch it as much, but, you know, I do watch it here and there, and it's definitely worth it. And I got this a few years ago, pretty good price. And I believe this is part of the reason why, because I was waiting for this to happen, but then Christmas kind of came and went. It came out in December, but I was been, I did some other videos about some other stuff like Christmas related films so I believe that's part of the why I did not talk about this initially um, but yeah Brenda Fricker in the second film is the bird lady and then the concierge is uh, Tim Curry who's always in, in, in the, these are two are in the second film they're both excellent in uh, Rob Schneider is in the second film as one of the hotel workers and just very fun movies and um, the first film has a lot of special features second movie really doesn't unfortunately um, this is uh, what the discs look like and um, of course this is before Fox was bought by Disney, so uh, now it's 20th Century Studios. Oh, hey, actually, it's right there, but the discs, it was like, you know, Fox, so, yeah. Kind of interesting how, <laughs> never noticed that before, but there you go, um, but yeah, I really love these movies. Um, not too fond of what happens afterwards. You know, after Macaulay Culkin got uh, older, you know, they the whole Home Alone with, you know, Kevin wouldn't have really worked well. Um, and so they uh, went in a different direction, and it, which is understandable. However, it doesn't totally, you know work as well, I don't believe, and I don't think most people think so either. Um, I, I do believe there are a good number of people who enjoy the third film, and there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that, of course, but um, I remember when I was a kid looking at the, these movies, um, I did like three more when I was younger than I do now. Not to say I hate three, but that is definitely the quality uh, I think is definitely lower. Um, uh, these two films are great, though. I, I especially watch the first film uh, every year, uh, Christmas time, because I just love it. It's a, it's a phenomenal movie. Uh, has a great uh, message about family and all that good stuff. So. Uh, not at all uh, uh, bad, you know, the spirit of what Christmas is supposed to be about is there. Yeah, the second film, I guess, it kind of goes a little more materialistic kind of way. Um, but the whole important of fa importance of family and all that stuff uh, is it, still there. So that's something that's good, at least. Um, but yeah, a 12-year-old Kevin or a 13-year-old Kevin being home alone or wherever wouldn't be as big of a deal, you know. He's older. He's old enough to 
to definitely be able to handle himself alone, especially since he was by himself in uh, two separate years, you know, when they went on vacation. So he would definitely be capable uh, of uh, uh, taking care of himself. Also, one other thing, you know, to truly show how uh, great of a range Joe Pesci has as an actor, Goodfellas came out in 1990, uh, same as Home Alone. Uh, gritty gangster crime drama and a family uh, Christmas film, which is a comedy. In both, Joe Pesci is the bad guy, but... Or he's a, a bad guy because, you know, a lot of people, characters in here are, you know, they're bad guys. But uh, he is definitely somebody who is more unhinged than some of the others. Uh, uh, you know, Marv and Harry, uh, yeah, they're both hilarious. But... Joe Pesci is just, you know, his acting range just by watching these two films, like back to back, or one night and then the other night, it's just, his range is amazing, you know. Won an Academy Award for this film, I do think it was deserved, uh, was excellent in this film, all the same, despite no <laughs> uh, real major award recognition that I've been able to see, but... Yeah, Joe Pesci, great actor. Uh, I know he isn't doing too much now since, you know, he's been happy with overall retirement and such. But, uh, yeah. Also, rest in peace to Ray Liotta. He was great. Great actor. And uh, he's missed. And uh, very sad that he passed away so suddenly. But, yeah happens unfortunately uh, but we have the many films that uh, Ray Liotta has done and also Vice City uh, the Grand Theft Auto Vice City if you have that game and played it but yeah I love Home Alone Home Alone's an excellent film second film is pretty good too I enjoy it I enjoy both um, definitely some of my favorite holiday films and Christmas films favorite Christmas film of all time and uh, I love rewatching it every year and I think it's a, a great thing to do you know and um, I hope all of you are doing well this holiday season whatever you celebrate or don't celebrate I hope you're just doing well in general you know happy Hanukkah Merry Christmas and all that stuff for all those who celebrate those holidays and for everyone else you know again hope you're doing well uh and uh if you don't celebrate either of those holidays you know uh, a movie like home alone is just good to watch it's just entertaining it's fun and uh it's not bad and if you haven't watched it or the sequel in quite some time i think it'd be worth watching again just uh uh, watch all those uh, characters and um, also John Hurd uh, passed away years ago too so rest in peace to him as well um, and that's really it um, hope all of you are having a great day having a great holiday season uh, happy Hanukkah Merry Christmas all that good stuff yeah, see you all next time Bye.